The biggest thing about Washington's presidency is how much hadn't been decided and how many decisions he had to make about what governing day to day would look like and what the presidency would look like. And during the Constitutional Convention, many of the delegates had basically agreed to leave the details of the presidency undecided, to leave that stuff fuzzy so that he could figure it out, figure out what worked best for him, and they trusted him to do that. And so once he was in office, then he actually had to make those decisions and go about setting precedent in a way that no other president has. Every single action he took was going to have that ramification, and he knew that. The cabinet is not actually in the Constitution, and Washington, once he was in office, realized that he needed more support and he needed more advice. And so he created the cabinet to provide those things. And he, because it wasn't written down and hadn't been passed in legislation, he relied on his own experience. And in particular, he relied on the councils of war that he had met with during the revolution when he had called his officers to his headquarters and they would provide advice and debate different options for him to consider during the course of the war. And that was a model that he had found really useful. And so he brought into the president and once he was in the president's office, he was living in Philadelphia at the time. That's where the federal city was. He was living in a large brick house. It was called the president's house. And he would invite the secretaries over to meet with him, and they would meet in his private study on the second floor of that building. Each secretary was responsible for their own department issues, but then when something came up that was new or was different or was potentially dangerous, then Washington would convene all the secretaries together and they would provide advice. So for example, the secretaries met with Washington when the Whiskey Rebellion broke out to decide how the government would respond and they met when France and Great Britain declared war in 1793 to try and figure out how the United States would stay out of that war and remain neutral. Washington's immediate successors, Adams and Jefferson, they used a lot of Washington's practices. They would meet with their secretaries in the president's house in the private setting like Washington had done. Jefferson, in particular, once he was in the White House, he carved out a space in his private library and he would invite the secretaries to come provide advice when a particular issue had come up. One of Washington's biggest legacies is the cabinet because every single president since Washington has used a cabinet. And now obviously the cabinet has changed a lot since then. It's much larger. There are 15 cabinet officers instead of four and there's a designated room to accommodate that size, but the cabinet has remained a very important part of the presidency and its role in the White House continues today.